I get this question often. Why do we need SQL in software testing? It's a question that comes up often. And in this video, I want to show you some realistic examples of how we use SQL in software testing. Whether you're doing manual testing or automation testing, SQL is a critical tool that you gotta have in your, in your toolbox, right? Uh, databases are where we store data, right? Duh. So SQL is the language we use to talk to database. Whenever we want to read information from a database, we use SQL. Whenever we want to write to a database, we use SQL. Whenever we want to modify a database, we use SQL. That's literally what SQL is. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. The L is for language. And uh, as key ways, we need that. We need to know, know how to write and read SQL at a basic level, depending on your position, you might need advanced depending on your position, but mostly at a basic level. And in this video, I'm going to show you three different test cases where we would actually use SQL, whether you're manual or automation, right? So my name is Adam Askenfu. All I do is teach QA related things, usually Python based QA automation. If you like this video, if you like things like this, make sure you follow, make sure you give this video a thumbs up because you're, you're really going to learn a lot from this. Okay. So let's look at this website. Let's assume we are testing the site we're testing the front end. so i'm going to show you an example of the front end and the back end basically three test cases and uh, we'll see right it's going to be a mix of uh, front end and back end so let's say you want to test a registration one of the, the most basic examples right uh, for test cases so let's say i go to the site this is demo store.spreadsqa.com you can check it out this is a website i built for my students and i also have videos on how to build a test site like this this is a site we practice most of our stuff I'll link, I'll link uh, videos, YouTube videos on how to build your own website like this. It's really easy, it takes like an hour. So let's see, the test case is to verify that registration work. So you come in here and you register, right? So when you look at it, the way you validate it is you register, you see the page change, you see a welcome message, the entire page looks different when you're logged in and when you're not logged in. So that is one way to, to validate, right? But in addition to that, you want to go to the database and make sure that that user got recorded in the database correctly, right? That you have to take it a step further, depending on a, a, a case to case again, right? You might be good enough just looking at it as registered, but there are cases you actually want to go to the database and make sure whatever is supposed to happen in the database actually happened. And the way you do that is by going to the database and reading the data. So you have to know SQL to be able to read the data. So in this case, this is a WordPress site. So WordPress uses MySQL. There's different types of databases. MySQL is the most popular one and WordPress actually uses MySQL. So we're going to see how we're going to actually validate that. So let me register a user. I'm going to come here and I'm just going to come up with an email, random email. I'm going to call it test user 11 at supersqa.com, right? Then I'm going to give some crazy password and I'm going to click on register. So now the user is registering it just did register right so visually we can see the page changed everything looks like we're inside the account so we know it is registered but you do want to make sure this is going to stick actually is, did the database happen or not and if you're doing automation in automation you can definitely check this right we said and you can see if this page is right but you can also go and look at the database right if you create the user using api you don't have no ui you create the you make an api you create the user then you go in the database and make sure that user is created, okay? So we created this user. We can see everything's looking good, but we want to take it a step further. We want to go in the database and check it out. In this case, you might be thinking, well, I can see it's logged in. Why should I bother? Yes, in this test case, you, you, have, an, uh, you have a way of validating unless you want to take it a step further. But the, sometimes the test, the software you're testing, it might not have a front end. You might be working on a software. You might be working on a process that's all back end. You don't even have a UI. So the only way to, for you to validate something is to go to the database. So that's why it is important to know SQL. And that's why most employers want. Okay. So now we actually registered. I'm going to go to the database. Um, this is called MySQL Workbench. This is a, a client we use to connect. Like right? It's like a UI. You know how the browser, you use the browser, use Chrome to connect to the web. And there are clients to connect to a database. So this is one of them. This is actually the most popular one. I have an entire course about SQL. If you are interested in learning SQL, check out the website. I'll put a link at the bottom. You can take my course. It's, it's, it's a good course. It's designed specifically for beginners. Okay. So now we come here and we put in that email address we just did. Right. And we're going to run a query. So this is an example of a SQL that reads from a table. Okay. If you don't know SQL, then this is one very basic one. 
So there's a table called WP users and a database called demo store. You can see it here. We have a database. We have a bunch of tables, a lot of tables, right? This website stores its data in here, most of its data. Some of it is stores it as a file also on the server. But anything that goes in database, this is the database. It stores a lot of information in the database. That's what a database is for. You have a website, you have information in that information stored. So what we see here is actually a bunch of tables where all the data is stored. And one of the tables is called WP users. This is where the user information is created. So I'll come here, I'll run this query, select star from this table where the user email is this guy, okay? This video is not to teach you how to write SQL, but just the idea. Now I'll come here, I'll execute this, and I expect to see a row. When I get, when I see a row, then I know this user was created in the database, okay? That is one test case. So you do something in the front end, and you wanna make sure it is actually sticking, it's actually in the database, you go to the database and you check it out, okay? That is one, one example. I'll give you another example, it's the same thing. So let's look at, we want to test out one of the products page. So I'm going to go to Python book, right? Let's say we have this product page and we're writing test cases for this product page. You test a lot of things, make sure this shows up, make sure that works, make sure this looks good, everything, right? So let's say in this particular case, we are trying to see this, the, the number that shows in stock, it actually works, it actually updates. This is not a hard-coded value. If the, if the data changes, this will actually change, right? So we would need to know information about the database like the tape like it, when you learn sql you learn the language but every application every database has its own structure so you need to know how that structure works for this website you would need to know which information goes to what table that's not something you learn when you learn sql that information would have to be provided to you what table what database where's the location the ip address the user the password everything to connect to a database that has to be provided to you then once you connect to it, then you have to know how to read. Once you know the table, how to read the table or how to update the table. So in this case, let's say if the database had a stock of 10, would, it, would this update? That's a test case, right? If, if the data changes, would the UI change? So we'll go in the database. I know this product's ID. I happen to know that, right? Because I prepared for this video. It's 460, I believe. So we're gonna to go to the database. It's gonna be a different table. So I'm gonna to go to this different table and I'm going to run this query. So this is another table. Select star from demo store WP post meta where post ID is 460 and meta key is stock, right? You don't need to know what this is. This is just SQL reading information specifically for this product. So we can see the meta value being three. So we're going to update it. If you're doing manual testing, you would just manually update it. You can just double click here. I'm going to change this to 10, okay? And you're going to click apply, apply one more time. Close. Now this should be updated. I can run. I can run the query again to verify that it is actually updated. There you go. It's updated. So now I'll go to the front end, which is my original test, right? I'm just setting up data. What I did is I went to the database and I did a setup of my test data. Now I'll come here, refresh the page, and verify this actually gets updated. Okay. That is another test case. If you are doing it in automation, you don't double click here and change it, right? You write code. That will run an update query. So we're going to update the value. Let's say we're going to do a 225. Okay. So I'm going to run this query. This does the updating. This is another query. So this query here, the first query is to read data. The second query is to basically write data or update data. So I updated it to 25. You're doing automation. That's how you do. You run a query in your code, whether you're doing Java or Python. Inside of your code, you would run SQL. And there you go. It is updated. Okay. That is another test case. The third example I'm gonna give you is, let's say you're doing backend testing, you're doing API testing. So let's say you have a product. First of all, you can even create a product. So let's create a product on this website. I'm using Postman to make API calls. So I'm gonna create a, a product called, like let's say I already created this one. So I'm gonna call it um, just cool shoe, okay? And and I'm gonna create it, it's 25 bucks. There you go, I, I made an API call. Now it is created. This is the page. Okay. Now I'm going to make an API call to delete this product. Then to verify the product is actually deleted, I'm going to go in the database and make sure the product is missing. So in this example, we have a product ID of 462. So first let's go to the database and let's see if this did, if this product actually exists. So this is another query, another table, WP post. 
So I'm looking for this ID. So select star from this table where the ID is that, right? That's just the, the most basic SQL right there. So I'm going to execute that. I should get one row return. I don't know why it is slow. Usually it's super, super fast. I think the website is having a little issues right now. It is slow, but it will come up because earlier we saw it coming up too. There you go. So we see the product actually exists in the database. So we validate the product is there. Now we're going to, the, our test is actually to, to test the delete endpoint. So we're going to come here. We're going to take the 462 ID and I'm going to, I'm going to call a delete endpoint. So I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to get this out of the way and click on uh, send. I made the API call. I got the 200. I deleted it. The API say is deleted because we got a status code of 200, which means everything went okay. But how do I know it's deleted? Sure, if you have an API, I can make another API call saying get the product and make sure it doesn't get anything. But I can go to the database, run the same exact query again, and I expect to see no rows, zero rows return. There you go. Because we deleted it, there's nothing here. And at the bottom, it shows you zero return. Earlier it was one return for the same query. Now there is zero return. So we saw how we use SQL to validate our test. So we registered the user, then we went to the database and we saw that that user exists in the database. Uh, another test case is we actually wanted to prepare data for our test. So we went to the database, updated a quantity. We went to the UI, the front end, verified the quantity is updated. Another example. The third example is we deleted a product and we verify it is gone from the database, right? First we went to the database. Well, to set up the test, we actually created a product, right? Just let's just say that's, that's not related to what we're doing here. Let's say we have a product we wanted to delete. We were testing the delete part. So we went to the DB, we looked at it, it's there. Then we make the API call to delete it. Then we went back to the database, check it's not there. So that means the API actually worked, okay? So those are test cases. That's why we need SQL to validate. Since the product that we're testing, the website, the web, the mobile app, whatever it is that we're testing, since it's using the database, when we're testing it, most of the time we wanna access the database directly and check that things that are supposed to happen actually happen okay so hopefully you find those useful hopefully you really get uh, a good a good vision of what why we need sql this those are just basic examples we can do a lot a lot more with sql and hopefully this video got the job done if you like it give it a thumbs up it really helps out with the algorithm and everything else and if you like content like this subscribe to my channel check out my website and if you have any questions if you need any help let me know there's contact forms everywhere so hit me up